Okay, let's continue with the rest of the masthead here. So let's make these pieces of text at the top and underneath the logo and the lines for them. And we're actually going to start with the lines. So I'm going to hit, hit W to see the structure here because I know that the lines are supposed to be, the upper line at least, is supposed to be exactly here on the margin. So to draw a line, well, it's, it's very simple. There's a line tool. It's just this button with a line on it and you click and drag to make a line you'll see nothing there i'll tell you in a minute why that's the pro why what why that's the case and you can click drag and hold shift to draw it horizontally vertically or at 45 degrees so to constrain it i'm going to undo this line i created here and just click on it or click at the very corner here and hold shift and just move along this edge. As I move towards the edge of the screen, you'll see the screen scroll. And I want to move until I get this green line again that shows me I am aligned with the logo. Now, for some reason, it's not showing up right now. That's not a problem for you. It might have already. The problem is that now if I hit W, I can see the line selected. But if I take the selection tool and click off of it, it's not there. So that's how some lines or depending on what your default settings in InDesign are, how your line might look. It's actually there if you hover above it you will see your cursor change and the line turn blue. You can, can click on it and select it. But the problem with it is that it's there, but it has no color. Also, for some reason, oh, no, it's not that long. It's fine. Uh, so to make it visible, I have to give it a width. I'm going to go with the line selected up here on the toolbar and zoom in on this area. This is where I get the quality of the line. I just want it solid and the thickness. And I want it half a point thick. And when I click that, you will see it showing up. This is my line. And now I'm going to click on it again. It's a bit fiddly. I can just make a selection outline or a selection box. And I can move my cursor downwards as I'm resizing to make sure I get this green line. It was okay, it just didn't show it to me, but it was already actually properly aligned. And now I am going to make the other one, the one underneath here. Um, but I am going to just copy I can either right click and copy or control C on the keyboard, control V and paste. And it's going to copy that line and I'm just going to place it approximately where it should be. I mean, horizontally, I'll still align it with the margins and vertically, I'll just give it some space here. And that is kind of it. And then I can either make another one or I can copy this in another way. I can hold Alt on the keyboard and when I move an object while I, I hold Alt on the keyboard, it copies it. And now I have the line, I just have to make it longer until it reaches this other edge and copy it again will work with the spacing in a bit. And now I'm going to add the text. Uh, I'm going to take the type tool. Actually, I'm going to press W before that to see my structure here. And now I'm going to take the type tool and from the corner here, drag and create a box that's exactly the height of the space between those two lines. It's gonna snap, so it's not difficult. And I'm gonna make it long-ish. I don't know exactly how long I need it right now. 
Um, but I can come back to my links folder and open the text file here and copy the first text and paste it here and change the properties of this. Now you see when I have text active, when my cursor here is blinking or something is selected, that's when I have text active. I get the text options here at the top. Depending on how large your screen is, you might get all of these or just a few of them. But at the very beginning here, you'll get uh, the font options themselves. And I'm going to switch the font here from Minion Pro, which is the default in InDesign, to uh, Adobe Garamond Pro and Italic. Uh, and the size here, if I'm not mistaken, should be 17. Now, it's not here in the drop down, but I'm going to click inside this box and put in 17. And that is what I want. Um, it's, it doesn't look very nice at this point because it's very close to the top line and far away from the, from the bottom line, but I'm going to fix that in a bit. Before that, I need to make another box. I'm going to make it from this line here again to the one at the bottom and I'll approximate the length and I'm going to paste the next line of type and the font for this is avant-garde EF normal 11 points in size and for the name here, this is actually of avant-garde EF medium. It's, it's a bit bolder. There's an issue with how this is displayed. Might happen on your computer, it might not, but it's an error with the font uh, in the final output. It should look okay. Okay, so now I have these two pieces of text here uh not very well set up so this one i have to align to the right here so i'm going to double click select actually it's not very important that i select the, this text because as long as it's active it's going to align i can't just align a selected letter so i'm just going to click inside it and I'm going to go here to the top and switch from the character properties shown by this A button to the paragraph properties, this inverse B button. And I'm just going to align the text to the right. So you'll see when I click, it just jumps here. And I also need to align it inside the box vertically. And for that, I need to select the box so I have to make sure the text is not active have no blinking cursors no select text I'm just gonna hit escape and now you see the box is active when I see the outline and if I go to the properties bar at the top now there's this area where I have four buttons this one that's active now aligned to the top aligns the text to the top this one aligns it to the bottom this one would distribute the lines if there were several of them, so they're equally spaced in the whole box. And this one just centers the text, which is what I want. And I want the same thing for this box as well, just center it. And for now, that's going to be fine. It's a bit too much space here, so maybe I can select all of these by holding shift and clicking on all of them and now I can take this up something like this just before the lower line hits the bottom of the G here and that's kind of okay and I'm gonna come here and 
make a bit more space between these two lines. We'll see how much we need. And just select this line here, copy it, and I'm just going to paste it. And you see it comes in with its own box. This is another way to do this. I just noticed this is not a line, so I'm zooming in to fix this line. But uh, we can just paste some stuff, some text in InDesign, and it's going to drop in in the center of the screen. And I'm just going to resize the box like this. Select all the text. And this is, again, avant-garde EF normal. 11 points in size the other way around with if you take a look closely at the text in the pdf with a few bits of changing text that are a bit bolder just those two so i'm going to select the roman 17 here and change it to avant-garde medium and the same with the 857. And the only thing left here, well, first of all, I have to center this in the box as well. And then I have to insert these little squares and align the text nicely. So the squares actually come from a different font. You can insert any symbol from any font. I'm just going to double click here where I need to put the first square. And I am going to go to the type menu and open the glyphs panel. And this is what comes up. It's basically a list of all the symbols inside a font. Now, this font doesn't have that square I'm looking for if you scroll through it a bit. Uh, so down here at the bottom, I can choose the font I want, and it's ITC ZAF. Uh, so you just have to type a Z, and it's going to be there. Hit enter, and you see this only has symbols. It doesn't really have letters. And I'm looking for this square here at the top. I'm just going to double click it. And I can either do this several times, but I have to look for it every time or I can just come in and copy the single character and also make sure you have a space before and after it. You'll be able to see the spaces when you're not in preview mode. They're marked by these blue dots. So I need one there, paste and space, space and paste, paste. No, actually not here, here. Just if you don't remember where, just look at the reference PDF. Another one here. And another one here. And one last thing to do. If you look at this, you'll see it is aligned from one margin to the other. The whole text spreads out to fill the entire space. This is a simple text setting. So I'm just going to select all this text. The squares are actually text themselves as well. And just scroll up a bit so I have everything in view. And here, if you have a big enough screen, you'll see the uh, the alignment options. If not, go back to the paragraph formatting controls and you'll see the alignment options here. And I'm actually going to go to the last part of the box here. And I have, I can align the text to the left of the box as it is now, to the center, to the right. But now the space, I've just switched the space to the beginning. What I really want here is to use this 
option where all lines are fully justified. So this one just justifies everything but the last line in the paragraph. And since this is a single line, it is the last line in the paragraph. But this button here forces everything to be justified. And you'll see when I press it, what happens. The whole line is forced to align both to the left and to the right with the space between the words being distributed. So this is what I want. Uh, and since we've looked at the lines, let's add a line to these boxes as well before we move to the next thing. Uh, you can just click a box and just where you had the options for the simple lines, you also have the options for the uh, outline of boxes. And I'm just going to come here and again select 0 0.5 points. I'm going to zoom out so you see what happens when I click on this. That box now has a nice outline and I'm going to select the big image as well and move up here and create an outline for that as well. Just a reminder, you should save once in a while, save early, save often. You know you haven't saved when you have this little asterisk here. Now I'm going to hit Control S or you can go to File and Save. And now I no longer have that issue. Okay, we'll continue in the next video.